read some stories today. And we're going to read some stories today that have a little bit of a scientific bent. I don't know if you know that word, but it's a good word. It means people like to explore and figure out how things work. So today we're going to go with Rose Nirenvir, Engineer, and this is by Andrea Beattie. This is the story of Rosie Nirenvir, who dreamed of being a great engineer. In Lila Greer's classroom at Blue River Creek, young Rosie said shyly, not daring to speak. But when no one saw her, she peeked in the trash for treasures to add to her engineer's stash. And late, late night, Rosie rolled up her sleeves and built her hideaway under the eaves. You know what an engineer is? An engineer is someone who likes to create things and invent. Alone in her attic, the moon high above, dear Rosie made gadgets and gizmos she loved. And when she grew sleepy, she hid her machines far under the bed where they'd never be seen. Look at all that stuff she's got. When Rosie was young, she had not been so shy. She worked with her hair swooping over one eye and made fine inventions for uncles and aunts, a hot dog suspenser, dispenser and helium pants. And there's the hot dog dispenser putting them out and look, she's got him tied with his helium pants on. <laughs> he was floating, wasn't he? The uncle she loved most was zookeeper Fred. She made him a hat to keep snakes off his head. From parts of a fan and some cheddar cheese spray, which everyone knows keeps the pythons away. <laughs> look at that, that's silly. She's spraying cheese everywhere and she's got a little stuff stand. He's cute. And when it was finished, young Rosie was proud, but Fred slapped his knee and he chuckled out loud. He laughed till he wheezed and his eyes filled with tears, all to the horror of Rosie Revere, who stood there embarrassed, perplexed, and debased, dismayed. She looked at the cheese hat and then looked away. I love it, Fred hooted. Oh, I truly do. But Rosie Revere knew that could not be true. She stuck the cheese hat on the back of her shelf and after that day kept her dreams to herself. Well, that's kind of sad, isn't it? And that's how it went until one autumn day, her oldest relation showed up for a stay. Her great-great Aunt Rose was a true dynamo who'd worked building airplanes a long time ago. She told Rosie tales of things she had done and goals she had checked off her list one by one. She gave a sad smile as she looked to the sky. The only thrill left on my list is to fly. But time never lingers as long as it seems. I'll chalk that one up to a lady's dream, to an old lady's dreams. That night, as Rosie lay wide-eyed in bed, a daring idea crept into her head. She, could she build a gizmo to help her aunt fly? She looked at the cheese hat and said, no, not I. But questions are tricky and some hold on tight, and this one kept Rosie awake through the night. So when dawn approached and red streaks lit the sky, young Rosie knew she just had to make her aunt fly. She worked and she worked till the day was half gone, then hauled her cheese copter out onto the lawn to give her invention a test just to see the ridiculous flop it might turn out to be. A cheese copter, that's interesting, isn't it? Strapped into the cockpit, she flipped on the switch. The helio cheese copter sputtered and twitched. It floated a moment and whirled round and round and throw, froze for a heartbeat and crashed to the ground. Oh no, there it is. Look at that spewing cheese out everywhere, isn't it? Then Rosie heard laughter and turned around to see the old woman laughing and slapping her knee. She laughed till she wheezed and her eyes filled with tears, all to the horror of Rosie Revere, who thought, oh no, never, not ever again, will I try to build something to sputter or spin or build a lever or a switch or a gear, and never will I be a great engineer. Oh, that's not, that's sad, isn't it? Pages of sticking together. She turned round to leave, but then great, great Aunt Rose grabbed hold of young Rosie and pulled her in close and hugged her and kissed her and started to cry. You did it! Hooray! It's the perfect first try. This great flop is over. It's time for the next. Young Rosie was baffled, embarrassed, perplexed. I failed, said dear Rosie. It's just made of trash. Didn't you see it? The cheese copter crashed. Yes, said her great aunt. It crashed, that is true. But first, it, had just, it did just what it needed to do. Before it crashed, Rosie, before that, it flew. Your brilliant first flop was a raging success. Come on, let's get busy and on to the next. She handed a notebook to Rosie Revere, who smiled at her aunt as it all became clear. 
Life might have its failures, but this was not it. The only true failure can come if you quit. They worked till the sun streaked away to its bed, and Aunt Rose tied her headscarf around Rosie's head and sent her to sleep with a small ear to ear to dream the bold dreams of a great engineer. At Blue River Creek, all the kids in grade two build gizmos and gadgets and doohickeys too. With each perfect failure, they all stand and cheer, but none quite proudly as Rosie Revere. And that was it. And that was a good story, wasn't it? Her aunt showed her that you should always just keep trying and keep trying. The next one we have is about a scientist. Ada Twist, scientist, also by Andrea B. I have books, I like books about dreams and things you can do if you try. Ada Marie, Ada Marie, said not a word till the day she turned three. She bounced in her crib and looked all around, observing the world, but not making a sound. She learned how to climb and made her big break with a trail of chaos left in her wake. She ran through the day, chasing each sound in sight and didn't slow down until she conked out at night. Look at that, she made a big mess, didn't she? Her parents were frazzled, but tried not to freak as Ada grew bigger and still did not speak. Clearly, young Ada, with lots in her head, would have something to say when it ought to be said. Look at that, she's playing with her toys and thinking about things. That's just what happened when Ada turned three. She tore through the house on a fact-finding spree and climbed up the clock just as high as she could. Her parents yelled, stop, as all good parents would. Ada's chin quivered, but she did not cry. She took a deep breath and she simply asked, why? Why should she stop? Why does it tick? Why does it talk? Why don't we call it a granddaughter clock? Why are there pointy things stuck to a rose? Why are there hairs up inside of your nose? She started with why and then what and how and when. By bedtime, she came back to why once again. She drifted to sleep as her day's parents smiled at the curious thoughts of their curious child, who wanted to know what the world was about. They kissed her and whispered, You'll figure it out. Look, she says, how does the lamp work? What is this? It's an elephant's nose, isn't it? Why does the plant grow? She's got a lot of questions. Her parents kept up with their high-flying kid, and she's asking why, how, what, when, where? Wh whose questions and chaos both grew as she did. And she says, how does it? Why does it? When will it? Even Miss Greer found her hands were quite full when young Ada's chaos wreaked havoc at school. But this was much clearer about Miss Ada Twist. She had all the traits of a great scientist. Look at that, she's mixed food coloring and some other things and she's made it all spew up in the air in a pretty rainbow, didn't she? Ada was busy that first day of spring testing the sounds that make mockingbirds sing when a horrible stench whacked her right in the nose, a pungent aroma that curled up her toes. Zowie, said Ada, which got her to thinking, what is the source of that terrible stinking? How does the nose know there's something to smell and does it still stink if there's no nose to tell? She rattled off questions and tapped on her chin. She started the start where she ought to begin. A mystery, a riddle, a puzzle, a quest. This was the moment that Ada loved best. Look at that. She's wondering what is that smell? Ada did research to learn all she could of smelling and smells, both the stinky and good. One hypothesis Ada thought could be true, the terrible stink came from Dad's cabbage stew. She tested and tested, but soon Ada knew it was time to come up with hypothesis too. Do you know what a hypothesis is? That means she's making a guess as to what that stink was, but she has to prove it, doesn't she? Then Zowie, the stink, stink struck again just like that. Hypothesis two is caused by the cat. The cat couldn't make the stink such on its own. It needed perfume and some fancy cologne. So young Ada tested it. The test was a flaw. She started again, but her parents yelled, stop. Look at that, she's gonna put the cat in the washing machine and that's not good, is it? Ada Marie, Ada Marie, to the thinking chair. Now, by the time we count three. Enough, said her mother, that's it, said her dad. Her parents were frustrated, frazzled, and mad. Why, Ada questioned. Her mother said, no. What, Ada inquired. Her father said, go. You've ruined our supper. You've made the cat stink. Enough with your questions. Now sit there and think. She looked at her parents. Her heart turned to goo. Poor Ada Twist didn't know what to do. 
She sat all alone by herself in the hall, and Ada once more could say nothing at all. And so Ada sat, and she sat, and she sat, and she thought about science, and Stu, and the cat, and how her experiments made such a big mess. Does it have to be so? Is that part of success? Our mess is a problem, and while she was thinking, what was the source of that terrible stinking? Ada Marie did what scientists do. She asked a small question, and then she asked two. And each of those led her to question three questions more, and some of those questions resulted in four. As Ada got thinking, she really dug in. She scribbled her questions and tapped on her chin. She started at why, and then what, how, and when. At the end of the hall, she reached why once again. Look at that, she's drawing on the wall. She's probably gonna get trouble for that too, isn't she? Her parents calmed down and they came back to talk. They looked at the hallway and just had to gawk. No patch of bare paint could be seen on the wall. The thinking chair now was the great thinking hall. They watched their young daughter inside as they did. What would they do with this curious kid who wanted to know what the world was about? They smiled and whispered, we'll figure it out. And that's what they did because that's what you do when your kid has a passion and heart that is true. They remade their world. Now they're all in the act of helping young Ada sort fiction from fact. She asks lots of questions. How could she exist? It's all in the heart of a young scientist. Look, they've got lots of books for her to read. Even her brother is doing it. And now she has a big roll of paper that she can write on instead of writing on the wall. And as for that smell, what can Ada Twist do but learn all she can with her friends in grade two? Will they discover the stink that curls toes? Well, that is the question. And someday, who knows? Well, that was a good book about a scientist, wasn't it? And later, Miss Heather's going to show you how to do a science experiment. I uh, want to let you know today now, thank you for joining us for story time. And we're not doing story time in the library, but the library is open. You can come in and make sure you wear your mask and sign up for summer reading and come visit me and Miss Molly and Miss Heather. Thanks. Bye now. Hi everyone, at the start of summer reading, today we're going to do a STEM program. Um, so it's going to be exploding foam. So the instructions uh, we'll have for you if you want to pick them up. Um, what you're going to need is you're going to need water, a bottle, cup, measuring cups, some food dye, a funnel, teaspoons, hydrogen peroxide, something to stir with, and dish soap. So first we're going to do is we're going to... Um, if you apologize, I'm going to use the thing. We're going to put half a cup of hydrogen peroxide in the plastic bottle. So if I could do this without spilling it. Okay. And then I'm going to add 10 drops of food coloring. Let's put some blue in there too. Maybe try different colors. Okay. All right. So next, we're going to add a teaspoon of dish soap. That's a tablespoon. I need a teaspoon. Here we go. So in that, teaspoon goes in the bottle. Okay, and it says to mix it up a little bit, um, so I'm gonna swirl it. I don't know if my knife will get down there to reach it. Okay, so in a separate cup, we're gonna put three teaspoons of warm water. Let's make sure I get the soap off the teaspoon I just used. Okay, so we're gonna use One, two, three. Okay, and then, and then we're going to put in one teaspoon of dry yeast. I forgot to tell you, you need yeast. So we're gonna open this up. This packet's 
kind of hard. So you're going to put a teaspoon of dry yeast in there. Okay, so this is where you're going to need your little stir. You're going to stir it, and it says it might get clumpy, but just make sure it stirs up real good. So we're going to stir it. i got to do it for 30 seconds. Okay, here we go. So you need the funnel, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the funnel in there and then you're gonna pull the yeast, but you gotta pull the funnel away real quick. Let's, here it comes, here it comes. Woo! <laughs> and that's how you make exploding foam. <laughs> And it's still going. It's kind of warm. 